Good day everyone and welcome to our discussion on quantitative research designs. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you a simplified way on identifying whether a study is experimental, quasi-experimental, or non-experimental. Na pwede mong pagpilian sa pag-conceptualize mo ng sarili mong study. If you are a research expert and you're watching this video, I would like to emphasize that this is a simplified discussion and it is made for senior high school learners. So there will be exemption to the rules and exemptions to the exemptions. On the other hand, kung ikaw naman ay isang senior high school student, I would suggest na panoorin at intindihin mo muna ang differences between independent and dependent variables and control and experimental groups bago mo panoorin ang lesson natin. I will be leaving a link on our description below. With that said, let's get to it. As mentioned, quantitative researches can generally be classified as to experimental, quasi-experimental, or non-experimental. It is important to note though that under each design ay merong pang mas specific na mga research designs. In our lesson, we are only going to focus on differentiating the three plus I'm going to give you suggested, advisable, or feasible na mga quantitative research designs na pwedeng gawin ng mga senior high school or even undergraduate students. We can actually differentiate these designs by simply asking three questions. First one, is there an intervention? In other words, meron bang independent variable na mamanipulahin or kukontrolin ng researcher para makita kung ano ang mangyayari or epekto nito sa isang dependent variable. If your answer is yes, meron po tayong intervention or independent variable, then the study would possibly be experimental or quasi-experimental. But if no, there is no independent variable being manipulated, then the study would most likely be a non-experimental design. Take a look at our example on the left side. The researcher wants to see the effect of the biofertilizer on plant growth. Clearly, there is an intervention or an independent variable being manipulated here, and that being the biofertilizer. Dahil gusto nilang makita kung merong bang mangyayari or epekto ito sa pagtubo ng halaman kapag ginamit ang fertilizer na ito. And tip lang. Kapag ang isang study o research title ay nag-uumpisa sa effects, effectiveness, impacts, influence, the use of, most likely there is an intervention. And that being the case, the study could either be experimental or quasi-experimental. The question you may have in your head right now is this, paano ko malalaman whether the study is experimental or quasi-experimental? Simple, by asking the second question. Is there a control group? The control group is identical to the experimental group except for the fact that it does not receive the intervention or the independent variable. Remember, if the study has an intervention and has both the experimental and control groups, then the study would most likely be an experimental research. On the other hand, if the study has an intervention but no control group, then it's most likely a quasi-experimental research. And lastly, if the study has no intervention and has no control group, then most probably it is a non-experimental research. But do you really want to know the biggest difference between an experimental and quasi-experimental research? Ask the third question. Is there a random assignment? Ibig sabihin ito, after randomly selecting these samples to serve as your respondents, you would then randomly assign them as to whether they go to the experimental or the control group. I want this to be as clear as possible. Magkaiba ang term na random sampling or selection sa term na random assignment. Random sampling or random selection refers to how you select individuals from the population to participate in your study. Ibig sabihin nito, ito yung sampling process mo. Ito yung pagkuha mo namang sample size or samples mo. On the other hand, random assignment refers to assigning these samples or individuals as to whether they go to the experimental or the control group. Bottom line is this, if your answer is yes, there is random assignment, then the study is an experimental research. But if it has no random assignment, then the study is quasi-experimental or non-experimental research design. 
So to summarize, an experimental research has an intervention, a control group, and uses random assignment. On the other hand, a quasi-experimental research has an intervention, has no or maybe possibly a control group, but definitely no random assignment. And lastly, a non-experimental research has no intervention, no control group, and no random assignment. I would like to emphasize that more of these elements, namely the intervention or the independent variable, the control group, and the random assignment present in one study, the higher the validity of the results. Ibig sabihin nito, comparing the three, an experimental research has the highest form of validity pagdating sa resultang binibigay niya. But relatively, kahit na ang isang non-experimental research design ay mas mataas pa rin ang validity ng kanyang results kumpara sa isang qualitative research. Which leads me to our next topic. What kind of quantitative research designs are advised for you? Especially ngayong times of pandemic or new normal na medyo mahirap mag-gather ng data kasi walang face-to-face. -face. In my opinion, the most feasible or achievable designs are Descriptive survey, correlation, ex post factor, or causal comparative designs. Let's get to the first one. A descriptive survey design can be classified as a non experimental research. Bakit? Because there is no experimental manipulation. Ibig sabi nito, walang intervention or independent variable na gagamitin ng mga researchers. Moreover, walang hypothesis na ita test. The main goal of a descriptive research is only to describe the person or the object being studied. Relatively, among the three suggested designs, descriptive survey is the easiest. Bakit? Because the researcher only has to think of one variable and one group or population to study. Take a look at our example. Career preferences of grade 12 learners of Tarlac National High School Annex. Kagaya ng nakikita mo ngayon, iisa lang ang variable na pinag-aaralan nila, which is career preferences at iisang grupo lang din, the grade 12 learners as a whole. Correlation this design still falls under the category of non-experimental researches. Sa isang correlation design, hindi niya tinitignan ng cause and effect relationship. Rather, it identifies relationships between variables. Sa isang correlation design, pwedeng ma-identify ng researcher kung meron bang positive relationship or negative relationship ang dalawang variables. Ang ibig sabihin ng positive relationship ay ganito. Kapag ba tumaas si variable 1, ay tataas din ba si variable 2? Or kapag bumaba si variable 1, ay bababa din ba si variable 2? Ang ibig sabihin naman ng negative relationship is this. Kapag ba tumaas si variable 1, ay bababa si variable 2? Or vice versa, kapag bumaba si variable 1, ay tataas naman si variable 2? Let us take a look at this example para mas madaling intindihin. As you can see, sa isang correlation design, kailangan mag-isip ng researcher ng dalawang variables na hahanapan ng koneksyon o relasyon at isang grupo or population na pag-aaralan. For example, parental involvement and academic achievement of grade 12 learners in the new normal. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina, sa isang correlation ay eh, pwedeng makita ng researcher kung merong positive relationship ang dalawang variables. Ibig sabihin nito, kapag ba tumaas ang parental involvement, ay eh, tataas din ba ang academic achievement ng mga grade 12 learners? Or baka naman merong negative relationship? Ibig sabihin, kapag ba mataas ang parental involvement, ay eh, baba ba ang academic achievement? Or pwede nating sabihin na kapag ba mababa ang parental involvement, itataas ang academic achievement. Lahat ng yan, kayang sagutin or pwedeng sagutin sa isang correlation design. Ex post facto or causal comparative design. Now, this one falls under the quasi-experimental researches. It is used to investigate possible causal relationship between the previous events and present conditions. I would like to emphasize that just like the first two, there is no experimental manipulation. Merong independent variable pero hindi siya manipulated by the researcher. Instead, there is a participant independent variable. Ibig sabihin nito, yung independent variable na i-consider or gagamitin ng researcher is not something manipulated. Rather, isa itong karakteristik o katangian na innate na sa respondent o participant ng study. Let us take a look at this para mas madaling intindihin. Sa design na ito, kailangan mag ng researcher ng isang variable at dalawa o mas maraming grupo para ikumpara. For example, gustong ikumpara ng researcher ang mathematical reasoning ability of private and public school learners. Isa pang halimbawa, 
gusto namang ikumpara ng researcher ang attitudes towards practical research to of academic and TVL learners. So again, iisip ka ng isang variable at dalawa o mas maraming grupo na pwede mong ikumpara in this design. So once again, ito yung mga designs which I believe are the most advisable, feasible, and achievable in these times of the new normal. Thank you for sharing your time with us. I do hope you learned something in this video. If you still have questions regarding this topic, please feel free to leave us a comment. Once again, maraming salamat po. Good day and God bless. Thank you for watching another video from IDS where we develop, educate, appreciate, and succeed all together. And again, this is Doc I telling you to have an eye that aims high.